treasures that you provide, provide us for the treasure of your name. Save our souls, O oh good one. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O Holy Trinity, have mercy on us, Lord, cleanse us from our sins. Master, pardon our transgressions. Holy One, visit me in our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Amen. Amen. Lord of mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Come, let us worship God, our King. Come, let us worship and fall down before Christ, our King and our God. Come, let us worship and fall down before Christ himself, our King and our God. The Lord hear thee in the day of affliction, in the name of the God of Jacob defend thee. May he send thee help from the sanctuary and aid thee out of Zion. May he remember all thy sacrifice and fatten thy whole burnt offering. May he grant thee according to thy heart and fulfill all thy counsel. We shall rejoice in thy salvation, and in the name of our God shall we be magnified. The Lord fulfill all thy petition. Now have I known that the Lord has saved his Christ. He will hear from his holy heaven. The salvation of his right hand is wrought in mighty acts. Some trust in chariots and seven horses, but we will call upon the name of the Lord. They are overthrown and fallen, but we are risen and set upright. O Lord, save the King, and hear us in the day when we call upon thee. The King should be glad in thy strength, O Lord, and in thy salvation shall he greatly rejoice. Thou hast granted him his heart's desire, and hast not denied him the request of his lips. For thou hast gone before him with the blessings of goodness. Thou hast set upon his head a crown of precious stone. He has life of thee, and thou gavest him length of days forever and ever. His glory is great in thy salvation. Glory and majesty shalt thou lay upon him. For thou shalt give him blessing forever and ever. Thou shalt make him glad with joy by thy countenance. For the king hopes in the Lord, and in the mercy of the Most High he shall not be shaken. Let thy hand be found on all thine enemies. Let thy right hand find out all them that hate thee. Thou shalt make them as a fiery oven at the time of thy presence. The Lord shall trouble them in his wrath, and fire shall devour them. Their fruits shalt thou destroy from the earth, and their seed from among the sons of men. For they intended evils against thee, and they devised counsels which they cannot establish. For thou shalt make them turn their back. In thy remnant thou shalt prepare their face. Be thou exalted, O Lord, in thy strength. We shall sing and praise thy mighty acts. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, cleanse us from our sins. Master, pardon our transgressions. Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, and never and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Amen. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Grant victories to the Orthodox Christians over their adversaries. And by virtue of thy cross, preserve thy habitation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As thou wast voluntarily crucified for our sake, grant mercy to those who are called by thy name, O Christ God. Make all Orthodox Christians glad by thy power, granting them victories over their adversaries, by bestowing on them the invincible trophy, thy weapon of peace. Now and ever and unto the ages of ages, amen. O awesome protectress who cannot be put to shame, despise not our prayers. O good and all him, Theotokos, confirm the habitation of the Orthodox. Save those called upon to govern us and grant them the victory which is from heaven. 
For thou hast given birth to God and alone art blessed. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. shall show forth thy praise. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. Lord, why are they multiplied that afflict me? Many rise up against me. Many say that my soul there is no salvation for him and his God. But thou, O Lord, art my helper, my glory, and the lifter up of my head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy mountain. I laid me down and slept. I awoke, for the Lord will help me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that set themselves against me round about. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for thou hast smitten all who without cause were my enemies. Thou hast broken the teeth of sinners. Salvation belongs to the Lord, and thy blessing is upon thy people. I laid me down and slept. I awoke, for the Lord will help me. O Lord, rebuke me not in thine anger, neither chasten me in thy wrath. For thine arrows are stuck fast in me, and thou hast pressed thy hand heavily upon me. For there is no health in my flesh, and in the face of thy wrath. There is no peace in my bones in the face of my sin. For mine iniquities have gone over my head, they have weighed upon me like a heavy burden. My wounds stank and festered in the face of my foolishness. I was wretched and bowed down until the end. I went mourning all the day long. For my loins are filled with insults and there is no health in my flesh. I am afflicted and greatly humbled. I have roared from the groaning of my heart. Lord, all my desire is before thee and my groaning is not hidden from thee. My heart is troubled, my strength has failed me. Even the light of mine eyes is not with me. My neighbors and my friends drew near and stood before me, and my nearest of kin stood afar off. And they that sought my soul took to violence, and they that sought evils from me spoke empty things and devised deceits all the day long. But I, like a deaf man, heard not, and was as a speechless man, not opening his mouth. And I became as a man that hears not, and whose mouth has no reproofs. For in thee, O Lord, have I hoped, thou wilt hear, O Lord, my God. For I said, let my enemies never rejoice over me, for when my feet were shaken, they spoke boastful words against me. For I am ready for scourges, and my grief is continually before me. For I will declare mine iniquity, and be sorry for my sin. But my enemies live and are stronger than I, and they that hate me unjustly are multiplied. They that reward evil for good have slandered me, because I pursued goodness. Forsake me not, O Lord my God, depart not from me, attend unto my hope, O Lord of my salvation. Forsake me not, O Lord my God, depart not from me, attend unto my help, O Lord of my salvation. O God, my God, I keep watch for thee at dawn, my soul has thirsted for thee, how often has my flesh longed for thee, in a barren and trackless and waterless land. So have I appeared before thee in the sanctuary to see thy power and thy glory, for thy mercy is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live, I will lift up my hands in thy name. Let my soul be filled as with marrow and fat, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. If I remember thee upon my bed at dawn, I did meditate on thee. For thou hast been my helper, and in the shelter of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul has cleaved to thee, thy right hand has upheld me. But they sought after my soul in vain. They shall go into the lowest parts of the earth. They shall be delivered up to the edge of the sword. They shall be portions for foxes. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone that swears by him shall be praised. 
where the mouth of them that speak just unjust things is stopped. At dawn I did meditate on thee, for thou hast become my helper, and in the shelter of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul has cleaved to thee, thy right hand has upheld me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. O Lord, God of my salvation, I have cried day and night before thee. Let my prayer come before thee, and climb thine ear to my supplication. For my soul is filled with evils, and my life has drawn nigh unto hell. I have been counted with them that go down to the pit. I am become as a man without help, free among the dead, like the slain that sleep in the grave, whom thou rememberest no more, and they are cut off from my hand. They laid me in the lowest pit, in dark places, and in the shadow of death. Thine anger lies hard upon me, and thou hast brought all thy waves upon me. Thou hast removed mine acquaintances far from me. They made me an abomination to themselves. I have been delivered up and am not gone forth. Mine eyes are weakened from poverty. I cried unto thee, O Lord, all the day. I have stretched out my hands to thee. Wilt thou work wonders for, this, for the dead, or shall physicians raise them up that they shall praise thee? Shall anyone tell of thy mercy in the grave and of thy truth in destruction? Shall thy wonders be known in darkness and thy righteousness in the land of forgetfulness? But unto thee have I cried, O Lord, and in the morning shall my prayer come before thee. Lord, why dost thou cast off my prayer and turnest thy face away from me? I am poor and in troubles from my youth, and after I was exalted I was humbled and distressed. Thy wrath passed over me, and thy terrors greatly troubled me. They encircled me like water all the day long, they surrounded me together. Thou hast put far from me friend and neighbor and mine acquaintances because of my misery. O Lord, God of my salvation, I have cried day and night before thee. Let my prayer come before thee, incline thine ear to my supplication. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all thine iniquities, who heals all thy diseases, who redeems thy life from corruption, who crowns thee with mercy and compassion, who satisfies thy desire with good things, so that thy youth shall be renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes mercy and judgment for all them that are wrong. He made known his ways unto Moses, his will to the children of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and merciful, long-suffering and plenteous in mercy. His wrath will not endure until the end, neither will he be angry forever. He has not dealt with us according to our iniquities, nor rewarded us according to our sins. As high as heaven is above the earth, so the Lord hath strengthened his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our iniquities from us. As the Father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion upon them that fear him. For he knows our fashioning, he has remembered that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass, as a flower of the field shall he flourish. For the wind passes over it, and it shall be no more. And no longer shall it know the place thereof. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him. And his righteousness to children's children, to them that keep his covenant, and remember his commandments to do them. The Lord has prepared his throne in the heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, all ye his angels, mighty in strength, that do his word, hearkening to the voice of his words. Bless the Lord, all ye his hosts, his ministers, that do his will. Bless the Lord, all ye his works, in every place of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. In every place of his dominion, bless the Lord, O my soul. Hear my prayer, O Lord, give ear to my supplication in thy truth. Hearken unto me in thy righteousness, and enter not into judgment with thy servant. For in thy sight shall no man living be justified. For the enemy has persecuted my soul. He has humbled my life to the earth. He has set me in dark places like those long dead. And my spirit was despondent within me. My heart within me was troubled. I remember days of old. I meditated on all thy deeds. On the works of thy hands that I meditate. I spread forth my hands unto thee. My soul thirsts for thee like a waterless lamp. Hear me speedily, O Lord, my spirit is veiled. Turn not thy face away from me, lest I be like them that go down to the pit. Cause me to hear thy mercy in the morning, for I have hoped in thee. Make known to me, O Lord, the way wherein I should walk, for I have lifted my soul up to thee. Deliver me from my enemies, O Lord, I have fled unto thee for refuge. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy good spirit shall guide me in the land of uprightness. Thou shalt quicken me, O Lord, for thy name's sake, in thy righteousness. Thou shalt bring my soul out of affliction. And in thy mercy thou wilt lay waste my enemies, and thou wilt destroy all them that afflict my soul, for I am thy servant. Hearken unto me in thy righteousness, and enter not into judgment with thy servant. 
Hearken unto me in thy righteousness, and enter not into judgment with thy servant. Thy good spirit shall guide me in the land of uprightness. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of the holy churches of God, and for the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for those who enter it with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. The attitude of Metropolitan Tikhon for his grace, Bishop Alexis, for the honorable priesthood, the diaconate in Christ, and for the clergy and the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for the right reverend abbot of this holy monastery, our commandrite Sergius, with all his brotherhood in Christ, and let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for this country, its president, for all civil authorities, and for the armed forces, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy habitation for every city and countryside and for the faithful dwelling in them, let us pray to the Lord. For seasonable weather, for abundance of the fruits of the earth and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. For travelers by land, by sea, and by air, for the sick and the suffering, for captives and their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. That we may be delivered from all affliction, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Commemorating our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our God. To all glory, honor, and worship to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. In the third tone, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. In the night my soul rises early for thee, O God, for thy commandments are a light on the earth. ye that dwell upon the earth. Jealousy shall take hold of an untaught people. them, O Lord, bring more evils upon those who are glorious on the earth. Hallelujah. <coughs> o Trinity, one in essence and undivided, unity in three co-eternal persons, to thee as God we sing the angels' hymn. Holy, holy, holy art thou, our God. Through the prayers of thine apostles and Saint Nicholas, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, daring to give glory to the one Godhead, to the Eternal Father, the Co-Eternal Son, and the Timeless Spirit. As the cherubim we say, Holy, holy, holy art thou, our God. Through the prayers of all thy saints have mercy on us. Now and ever and unto ages of ages, amen. 
The judge shall come suddenly, and the deeds of each shall be exposed. But at midnight we cry out with fear, Holy, holy, holy art thou, O God. Witnesses, you were made divine heralds of the truth and teachers of the church, for you trampled underfoot the air of idolatry and clearly proclaimed the Trinity. O blessed saints, pray to the triune God that we may be granted great mercy. Their proclamation has gone out into all the earth and their words to the ends of the universe. Come and let us all sing in praise of the apostles, since they are our helmsmen, for they overcame the air of idolatry. They have led us to the light of life and taught us to give glory to the Trinity. With all the faithful, then we celebrate their honored memory, and we glorify the Savior. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Vine that has never known the husbandman, O Virgin, now is born the ripe cluster of grapes. From him we receive the wine of salvation, making glad the souls and bodies of us all. Therefore do we call thee blessed, for thou art the cause of all good things. And forever with the angels we cry out to thee, rejoice, so full of grace. The reading is of the life of our venerable mother Mary of Egypt. Bless most blessed master to read. Amen. It is good to hide the secret of the king, but it is glorious to reveal and preach the works of God. So said the archangel Raphael to Tobit when he performed the wonderful healing of his blindness. Actually, not to keep the secret of a king is perilous and a terrible risk, but to be silent about the works of God is a great loss for the soul. And I, says St. Sophronius, in writing the life of St. Mary of Egypt, am afraid to hide the works of God by silence, remembering the misfortune threatened to the servant who hid his God-given talent in the earth. I am bound to pass on the holy account that has reached me, and let no one think, continues St. Sophronius, that I have had the audacity to write untruth or doubt this great marvel. May I never lie about holy things. If there do happen to be people who, after reading this record, do not believe it, may the Lord have mercy on them, because reflecting on the weakness of human nature, they consider impossible these wonderful things accomplished by holy people. But now we must begin to tell this most amazing story, which has taken place in our generation. There was a certain elder in one of the monasteries of Palestine, a priest of holy life and speech, who from childhood had been brought up in monastic ways and customs. This elder's name was Zosimus. He had been through the whole course of the ascetic life, and in everything he adhered to the rule once given to him by his tutors as regards spiritual labors. He had also added a good deal himself whilst laboring to subject his flesh to the will of the spirit. And he had not failed in his aim. He was so renowned for his spiritual life that many came to him from neighboring monasteries and some even from afar. While doing all this, he never ceased to study the divine scriptures, whether resting, standing, working, or eating food, if the scraps he nibbled could be called food, he incessantly and constantly had a single aim, always to sing of God and to practice the teaching of the divine scripture. Zosimus used to relate how, as soon as he was taken from his mother's breast, he was handed over to the monastery where he went through his training as an ascetic till he reached the age of 53. After that, he began to be tormented with the thought that he was perfect in everything and needed no instruction from anyone, saying to himself mentally, is there a monk on earth who can be of use to me and show me a kind of asceticism that I have not accomplished? Is there a man to be found in the desert who has surpassed me? Thus thought the elder, when suddenly an angel appeared to him and said, Zosimus, valiantly have you struggled, as far as this is within the power of man. Valiantly have you gone through the ascetic course. But there is no man who has attained perfection. Before you lie unknown struggles greater than those you have accomplished. That you may know how many other ways lead to salvation, leave your native land like the renowned patriarch Abraham and go to the monastery by the river Jordan. Zosimus did as he was told. He left the monastery in which he had lived from childhood and went to the river Jordan. At last he reached the community, the community to which God had sent him. Having knocked at the door of the monastery, he told the monk who was the porter who he was, and the porter told the abbot. On being admitted to the abbot's presence, Zosimus made the usual monastic prostration and prayer. Seeing that he was a monk, the abbot asked, Where do you come from, brother, and why have you come to us, poor old men? Zosimus replied, There is no need to speak about where I have come from, but I have come, father, seeking spiritual profit. 
For I have heard great things about your skill in leading souls to God. Brother, the abbot said to him, only God can heal the infirmity of the soul. May he teach you and us his divine ways and guide us. But as it is the love of Christ that has moved you to visit us poor old men, then stay with us, if that is why you have come. May the good shepherd who laid down his life for our salvation fill us all with the grace of the Holy Spirit. After this, Zosimus bowed to the abbot, asked for his prayers and blessing, and stayed in the monastery. There he saw elders proficient both in action and the contemplation of God, a flame in spirit, working for the Lord. They sang incessantly, they stood in prayer all night. Work was ever in their hands, and psalms on their lips. Never an idle word was heard among them. They knew nothing about acquiring temporal goods or of the cares of life. But they had one desire, to become in body like corpses. Their constant food was the word of God, and they sustained their bodies on bread and water, as much as their love for God allowed them. Seeing this, Zosimus was greatly edified and prepared for the struggle that lay before him. Many days passed, and the time drew near when all Christians fast to prepare themselves to worship the, div the divine passion and resurrection of Christ. The monastery gates were kept always locked and only opened when one of the community was sent out on some errand. It was a desert place, not only unvisited by people of the world, but even unknown to them. There was a rule in the monastery which was the reason why God brought Zosimus there. At the beginning of the great fast, the priests celebrated the holy liturgy and all partook of the holy body and blood of Christ. After the liturgy, they went to the refectory and would eat a little Lenten food. Then all gathered in church, and after praying earnestly with prostrations, the elders kissed one another and asked forgiveness. And each made a prostration to the abbot and asked his blessing and prayers for the struggle that lay before them. After this, the gates of the monastery were thrown open, and singing, The Lord is my light and my Savior, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the defender of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? And the rest of that psalm all went out into the desert and crossed the river Jordan. Only one or two brothers were left in the monastery, not to guard the property, for there was nothing to rob, but so as to not leave the church without divine service. Each took with him as much as he could or wanted in the way of food, according to the needs of his body. One would take a little bread, another some figs, another dates or wheat soaked in water. And some took nothing but their own body covered with rags and fed when nature forced them to it on the plants that grew in the desert. After crossing the Jordan, they all scattered far and wide in different directions. And this was the rule of life they had, and which they all observed, neither to talk to one another, nor to know how each one lived and fasted. If they did happen to catch sight of one another, they went to another part of the country, living alone and always singing to God, and at a definite time eating a very small quantity of food. In this way they spent the whole of the fast and used to return to the monastery a week before the resurrection of Christ on Palm Sunday. Each one returned, having his own conscience as the witness of his labor, and no one asked another how he had spent his time in the desert. Such were rules of the monastery. Every one of them, whilst in the desert, struggled with himself before the judge of the struggle, God, not seeking to please men and fast before the eyes of all. For what is done for the sake of men, to win praise and honor, is not only useless to the one who does it, but sometimes the cause of great punishment. Zosimus did the same as well, and he went far, far into the desert with a secret hope of finding some father who might be living there and who might be able to satisfy his thirst and longing. And he wandered on tireless, as if hurrying on to some definite place. He had already walked for twenty days, and when the sixth hour came, he stopped, and turning to the east, he began to sing the sixth hour and recite the customary prayers. He used to break his journey thus at fixed hours of the day, to rest a little, to chant psalms, standing, and to pray on bent knees. And as he sang thus without turning his eyes from the heavens, he suddenly saw to the right of the hillock on which he stood the semblance of a human body. At first he was confused, thinking he beheld a vision of the devil, and even started with fear. But having guarded himself with the sign of the cross and banished all fear, he turned his gaze in that direction and in truth saw some form gliding southwards. It was naked, the skin dark as if burned up by the heat of the sun. The hair on its head was white as a fleece and not long, falling just below its neck. Zosimus was so overjoyed at beholding a human form that he ran after it in pursuit, but the form fled from him. He followed. 
At length, when he was near enough to be heard, he shouted, Why do you run away from an old man and a sinner? Slave of the true God, wait for me, whoever you are, in God's name, I tell you, for the love of God, for whose sake you are living in this desert. Forgive me for God's sake, but I cannot turn towards you and show you my face, Abba Zosimus, for I am a woman, and naked as you see with the uncovered shame of my body. But if you would like to fulfill one wish of a sinful woman, throw me your cloak so that I can cover my body and can turn to you and ask for your blessing. Here terror seized Zosimus, for he had heard that she called him by name. But he realized that she could not have done so without knowing anything of him if she had not had the power of spiritual insight. He at once did as, she was, as he was asked. He took off his old, tattered cloak and threw it to her, turning away as he did so. She picked it up and was able to cover at least a part of her body. Then she, returned, then she turned to Zosimus and said, Why did you wish, Abba Zosimus, to see a sinful woman? What do you wish to hear or learn from me, you who have not shrunk from such great struggles? Zosimus threw himself on the ground and asked for her blessing. She likewise bowed down before him. And thus they lay on the ground prostrate, asking for each other's blessing. And one word alone could be heard from both, bless me. After a long while, the woman said to Zosimus, Abba Zosimus, it is you who must give blessings and pray. You were dignified by the order of priesthood, and for many years you have been standing before the holy altar and offering the sacrifice of the divine mysteries. This flung Zosimus into even greater terror. At length, with tears, he said to her, O mother, filled with the Spirit, by your mode of life it is evident that you live with God and have died to the world. The grace granted to you is apparent, for you have called me by name and recognized that I am a priest, though you have never seen me before. Grace is recognized not by one's orders, but by gifts of the Spirit. So give me your blessing for God's sake, for I need your prayers. Then giving way before the wish of the elder, the woman said, Blessed is God who cares for the salvation of men and their souls. Zosimus answered, Amen, and both rose to their feet. Then the woman asked the elder, Why have you come, man of God, to me who am so sinful? Why do you wish to see a woman naked and devoid of every virtue? Though I know one thing, the grace of the Holy Spirit has brought you to render me a service in time. Tell me, Father, how are the Christian peoples living, and the kings? How is the church guided? Zosimus said, By your holy prayers, Mother, Christ has granted lasting peace to all. But fulfill the unworthy petition of an old man, and pray for the whole world, and for me, who am a sinner, so that my wanderings in the desert may not be fruitless. She answered, you who are a priest, Abba Zosimus, it is you who must pray for me and for all, for this is your calling. But as we must all be obedient, I will gladly do what you ask. And with these words, she turned to the east, and raising her eyes to heaven and stretching out her hands, she began to pray in a whisper. One could not hear separate words, so that Zosimus could not understand anything that she said in her prayers. Meanwhile, he stood, according to his own word, all in a flutter, looking at the ground without saying a word. And he swore, calling God to witness, that when at length he thought that her prayer was very long, he took his eyes off the ground and saw that she was raised about a forearm's distance from the ground and stood praying in the air. When he saw this, even greater terror seized him, and he fell on the ground weeping and repeating many times, Lord, have mercy. And whilst lying prostrate on the ground, he was tempted by a thought. Is it not a spirit, and perhaps her prayer is hypocrisy? But at the very same moment, the woman turned round, raised the elder from the ground, and said, Why do thoughts confuse you, Abba, and tempt me, and tempt you about me, as if I were a spirit and a dissembler in prayer? Know, Holy Father, that I am only a sinful woman, though I am guarded by holy baptism. And I am no spirit, but earth and ashes and flesh alone. And with these words, she guarded herself with the sign of the cross on her forehead, eyes, mouth, and breast, saying, May God defend us from the evil one and from his designs, for fierce is his struggle against us. Hearing and seeing this, the elder fell to the ground, and embracing her feet, he said with tears, I beg you by the name of Christ our God, who was born of a virgin, for whose sake you have stripped yourself, for whose sake you have exhausted your flesh. Do not hide from your slave who you are and whence and how you came into this desert. Tell me everything so that the marvelous works of God may become known. 
a hidden wisdom and a secret treasure, what profit is there in them? Tell me all, I implore you. For not out of vanity or for self-display will you speak, but to reveal the truth to me, an unworthy sinner. I believe in God for whom you live and whom you serve. I believe that he led me into this desert so as to show me his ways in regard to you. It is not in our power to resist the plans of God. If it were not the will of God that you and your life should be known, he would not have allowed me to see you and would not have strengthened me to undertake this journey, one like me who never before dared to leave his cell. Much more, said Abazosimus. But the woman raised him and said, I am ashamed, Abba, to speak to you of my disgraceful life. Forgive me, for God's sake. But as you have already seen my naked body, I shall likewise lay bare before you my work, so that you may know with what shame and obscenity my soul is filled. I was not running away out of vanity, as you thought, for what have I to be proud of? I, who was the chosen vessel of the devil. But when I start my story, you will run from me as from a snake, for your ears will not be able to bear the violence of my actions. But I shall tell you all without hiding anything, only imploring you first of all to pray incessantly for me, so that I may find mercy on the day of judgment. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Have mercy on me, O God, according to thy great mercy, and according to the multitude of thy compassions. Blot out my transgression, wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know mine iniquity and my sin is continually before me. Against thee only have I sinned and done what is evil before thee, that thou mightest be justified in thy words and prevail when thou art judged. For behold, I was conceived in iniquities, and in sins did my mother bear me. For behold, thou hast loved truth, the unknown and hidden things of thy wisdom, as thou made known unto me. Thou shalt sprinkle me with hyssop, and I shall be cleansed. Thou shalt wash me, and I shall be made whiter than snow. Thou shalt cause me to hear joy and gladness, the bones that have been humble shall rejoice. Turn thy face away from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and establish me with a ruling spirit. I will teach transgressors thy ways, and the ungodly shall return to thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation. And my tongue shall rejoice in thy righteousness. O Lord, thou shalt open my lips, and my mouth shall declare thy praise. For if thou hadst desired sacrifice, I would have given it. Thou wilt not be pleased with whole burnt offerings. A sacrifice to God is a broken spirit. A broken and humbled heart God will not despise. Do good, O Lord, and I get pleasure and desire, and let the walls of Jerusalem be built. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifice of righteousness, with oblations and whole burnt offerings. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. Like the first Eve, 
When thou hast looked in wickedness and was grievously wounded, thou hast touched the tree and rashly tasted the deceptive food. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Instead of the visible Eve, I have the Eve of the mind, the passionate thought in my flesh showing me what seems to be sweet. Yet whenever I taste from it, I find it bitter. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Adam was justly banished from Eden because he disobeyed one commandment of thine, O Savior. What then shall I suffer, for I am always rejecting thy words of life? Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. By my own free choice, I have incurred the guilt of Cain's murder. I have killed my conscience, bringing the flesh to life and making war upon the soul by my wicked actions. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O Jesus, I have not been like Abel in his righteousness. Never have I offered thee acceptable gifts or goodly actions, a pure sacrifice or a life unblemished. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Like Cain, O miserable soul, we too have offered to the creator of all defiled actions and a polluted sacrifice, a worthless life, and so we also are condemned. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. As the potter molds the clay, thou hast fashioned me, giving me flesh and bones, breath and life. But accept me in repentance, O my Maker and my Deliverer and Judge. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I confess to thee, O Savior, that since I have committed the wounds of my soul and body, which murderous thoughts like thieves have afflicted inwardly upon me. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Though I have sinned, O Savior, yet I know that thou art full of loving kindness. Thou hast chastised with mercy and art fervent in compassion. Thou didst see me weeping and dost run to meet me, like the father calling back the prodigal son. Have mercy on me, O oh God, have mercy on me. I lie as an outcast before thy gates, O Savior, in mine old age. Cast me not down empty into hell. Before the end comes, in thy love grant me remission of sins. Have mercy on me, O oh God, have mercy on me. I am the man who fell among thieves, even mine own thoughts. They have covered all my body with wounds, and I lie beaten and bruised. But come to me, O Christ, my Savior, and heal me. Have mercy on me, O oh God, have mercy on me. The priest saw me first, but passed by on the other side. The Levite looked on me in my distress, but despised my nakedness, O Jesus. Sprung from Mary, do thou come to me and take pity on me. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of all, take from me the heavy yoke of sin, and in thy compassion grant me remission of sins. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Check me not, O Savior, cast me not away from thy presence. Take from me the heavy yoke of sin, and in thy compassion grant me remission of sins. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. All mine offenses, voluntary and involuntary, manifest and hidden, known and unknown, do thou forgive, O Savior, for thou art God, be merciful and save me. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. From my youth, O Savior, I have rejected thy commandments. Ruled by the passions, I have passed my whole life in heedlessness, heedlessness, heedlessness and sloth. Therefore I cry to thee, O Savior, even now at the end, save me. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. As the prodigal, O Savior, I have wasted the substance of my soul in riotous living, and I am barren of the virtues of holiness. In my hunger I cry, O compassionate Father, come quickly out to meet me and take pity on me. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I fall down, O Jesus, at thy feet. I have sinned against thee. Be merciful to me. Take from me the heavy yoke of sin, and thy compassion grant me tears of compunction. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Enter not into judgment with me, bringing before me the things I should have done, examining my words and correcting my impulses. But in thy mercy overlook my sins and save me, O Lord Almighty. Venerable Mother Mary, pray to God for us. Give me the light of grace from God's providence on high, that I may flee from the darkness of the passions and sing fervently the joyful story of thy life, O Mary. Venerable Mother Mary, pray to God for us. Knowing the divine laws of Christ, thou hast drawn near.
turn to him, forsaking the unbridled longings of sensual pleasure, and in fear of God, thou hast gained all the virtues as if they were one. Memorable Father, and through pray to God for us. For thine intercessions, O Andrew, deliver us from shameful passions, and we pray thee make us now partake of Christ's kingdom, for with faith and love we sing thy praises. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O Trinity, beyond all being worshipped in unity, take from me the heavy yoke of sins, and in thy compassion grant me tears of compunction. Now and ever, and unto ages of ages, amen. O Theotokos, the hope and protection of those who sing thy praises, take from me the heavy yoke of sin, and O pure lady, accept me in repentance. Attend the heavens, and I shall speak and sing in praise of Christ, who from a virgin came to us in the flesh. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I shall speak, give ear, O earth, to the voice of one who repents before God and sings his praise. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Look upon me in compassion, O God, with thy merciful eye, and accept my fervent confession. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. More than all men I have sinned, I alone have sinned against thee, but as God take pity on thy creation, O Savior. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I am surrounded by the storm of sin, O compassionate Lord, but stretch out thine hand to me, as once thou hast to Peter. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I offer to thee, O merciful Lord, the tears of the harlot. Take pity upon me, O Savior, in thy compassion. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. With the lusts of passion, I have darkened the beauty of my soul, and I turned my whole mind entirely into dust. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I have torn the first garment that the Creator wove for me in the beginning, and now I lie naked. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I have clothed myself in the torn coat that the serpent wove for me by his first counsel, and I am ashamed. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I looked upon the beauty of the tree, and my mind was deceived, and now I lie naked and ashamed. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. All the ruling passions have plowed upon my back, making long furrows of wickedness. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I have lost the beauty and glory with which I was first created, and now I lie naked and ashamed. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Sin has stripped me of the robe that God once wove for me, and it has sewed for me a garment of skin. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I am clothed with the raiment of shame as with fig leaves, in condemnation of my self-willed passions. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I am clad in a garment that is defiled and shamefully blood-stained by a life of passion and self-indulgence. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I have stained the garment of my flesh, O Savior, and defiled that which was made in thine image and likeness. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I have fallen beneath the painful burden of the passions and the corruption of material things, and I am hard-pressed by the enemy. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Instead of freedom from possessions, O Savior, I have pursued a life in love with material things, and now I wear a heavy yoke. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I have adorned the idol of my flesh with, many, with a many-colored coat of shameful thoughts, and I am condemned. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I have cared only for the outward adornment and neglected that which is within, the tabernacle fashioned by God. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. With 
my lustful desires, I have formed within myself the deformity of the passions and disfigured the beauty of my mind. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I have discolored with the passions the first beauty of thine image, O Savior, but seek me as once thou hast sought the lost coin and find me. Have mercy on me, O God, I cry to thee, I have sinned, I alone have sinned against thee. Accept my tears also as sweet ointment, O Savior. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Like David, I have fallen into lust, and I am covered in filth. But wash me clean, O Savior, by my tears. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. To thee, be merciful, O Savior, be merciful to me, for no child of Adam has ever sinned against thee as I have sinned. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I have no tears, no repentance, no compunction, but as God do thou thyself, O Savior, bestow them on me. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Lord, Lord, at the last day, shut not thy door against me, but open it to me. For I repent before thee. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O of mankind, who desires that all should be saved, in thy goodness call me back and accept me in repentance. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Give ear to the groaning of my soul and accept the tears that fall down from mine eyes, O Savior, and save me. O undefiled, virgin alone, worthy of praise, intercede fervently for our salvation. said Lamech, and a young man to my hurt, and he cried aloud, lamenting, Dost thou not tremble then, my soul? For thou hast defiled thy flesh and polluted thy mind. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Ah, how I have emulated Lamech, the murderer of old, slaying my soul as if it were a man, and my mind as if it were a young man. With sensual longings I have killed my body, as Cain the murderer killed his brother. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Skillfully hast thou planned to build a tower, O my soul, and to establish a stronghold for thy lusts. But the Creator confounded thy designs and dashed thy devices to the ground. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I am wounded and smitten. See the enemy's arrows which have pierced my soul and body. See the wounds, the open sores, and the injuries. 
I cry to thee, see the blows inflicted by my freely chosen passion. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Roused to anger by their transgressions, the Lord once rained down fire from heaven and burnt up the men of Sodom, and thou, my soul, hast kindled the fire of Gehenna, and there to thy bitter sorrow thou shalt burn. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Go and see that I am God, searching out men's hearts and punishing their thoughts, reproving their actions and burning up their sins, and in my judgment I protect the orphan and the humble and the poor. Venerable Mother Mary, pray to God for us. Sunk in the abyss of wickedness, O Mary, thou hast lifted up thine hands to the merciful God, and as to Peter in his loving kindness he stretched out his hand to thee in help, seeking in every way thy conversion. Venerable Mother Mary, pray to God for us. In love thou hast run to Christ, turning from thy former path of sin. Find thy food in the trackless wilderness, and fulfilling in purity the commandments of God. Venerable Father Andrew, pray to God for us. See, O oh my soul, let us see the love of our God and Master for mankind, and before the end comes with tears, let us fall down before him, crying, at the prayers of Andrew, O Savior, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O Trinity, uncreated and without beginning, O undivided unity, accept me in repentance and save me a sinner. I am thy creation, reject me not but spare me and deliver me from the fire of condemnation. Now and ever and unto ages of ages, amen. O pure Lady, Mother of God, the hope of those who run to thee in the haven of the storm-tossed, pray to the merciful God, thy Creator and thy Son, that he may grant his mercy even to me. On the unshaken rock of thy commandments, O Christ, establish my wandering mind. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O Lord, Lord, my soul once rain down fire from heaven and consume the land of Sodom. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O my soul, flee like lots of the mountain, take refuge, O our, before it is too late. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Flee from the flames, my soul, flee unto the, from the burning heat of Sodom, flee from destruction with the fire of God. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I confess thee, O Savior, I have sinned, I have sinned against thee, but in thy compassion absolve and forgive me. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I alone have sinned against thee, I have sinned more than all men, reject me not, O Christ my Savior. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Thou art the good shepherd, seek me the lamb that is strayed, and do not forget me. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O Lord, my beloved Jesus, thou art my creator, and thee shall I be justified, O Savior. Most holy Trinity, our God, have mercy on us. God, truly in you these favors from error and temptation and distress. Most holy Theotokos, save us. Hail God, hail throne of the Lord, hail mother of our life. On the rock of thy commandments, O Lord, strengthen my wavering heart, for thou alone art holy. Thou art the fountain of life and the destroyer of death, and from my heart I cry unto thee. Before the end I have sinned, be merciful to me, and save me. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I have followed the example of, soul of those who lived in wantonness in the days of Noah, like them I have condemned to drown in the flood. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. 
Lord, I have sinned against thee. Be merciful to me, for there is no sinner whom I have not surpassed in my offenses. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. My soul, thou hast followed Ham, who mocked his father. Thou hast not coveted thy neighbor's shame, coveted thy neighbor's shame, walking backwards with averted face. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O wretched soul, thou hast not inherited the blessing of Shem, nor hast thou received like chaffet, which to me the land of forgiveness. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O my soul, depart from sin, from the land of Iran, and come to the land of that Abraham inherited, which flows away through corruption and eternal life. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Thou hast heard my soul, Abraham, in days of old, left the land of his fathers and became a wanderer, follow him in his choice. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. At the oak of Mamre, the patriarch gave hospitality to the angels, and in his old age he inherited the reward of the promise. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Thou knowest, O my miserable soul, Isaac was far more mystically as a new and unwanted sacrifice. The Lord, follow him in his choice. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Thou hast heard, O my soul, be watchful, O Ishmael was driven out as the child of a bondwoman. Take heed, lest the same thing happen to thee because of thy lust. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. My soul, thou hast become like Hagar the Egyptian, thy free choice has been enslaved, was born as thy child, and wish my own stubborn willfulness. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Thou knowest, my soul, the ladder that was shown to Jacob, reaching up from earth to heaven, why hast thou not produced firm foundation for it to be thy godly action? Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Follow the example of Melchizedek, the priest of God, the king stood apart, that who was an image of the life of Christ who were among men in the world. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Do not look back, my soul, and so be turned in the pillar of salt. Fear the example of the people of Sodom and take refuge in Zoar. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. My soul, like Lot, from the burning of sin, flee from Sodom and Gomorrah, flee from the flame of every brutish desire. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Have mercy, O Lord, have mercy. May I cry to thee when thou comest with thine angels, give to every man your reward for his deeds. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Reject not, O Master, the prayer of those who sing thy praises, but in thy loving kindness be merciful. Forgiveness to those that ask with faith. Venerable Mother Mary, pray to God for us. I am held fast, O Mother, by the tempest and billows of sin. Do thou keep me safe and lead me to the haven of divine repentance. Venerable Mother Mary, pray to God for us. O Holy Mary, offer thy prayer of supplication the compassion of Theotokos. Through thine intercessions, open to me the door that leads to God. Venerable Father Andrew, pray to God for us. Let thy prayers grant even to me forgiveness of transgressions. O Andrew, Bishop of Crete, be best of guides, leading us to mysteries of repentance. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Most simple unity, praise the Trinity of persons. Great nature, our beginning, save us with faith, worship thy power. Now and ever and unto ages of ages, amen. O Mother of God, without knowing man, thou hast given birth within time to the Son, who is begotten outside time from the Father, and strange wonder thou givest up the remaining virgin. On the rock of thy commandments, O Lord, Strengthen my wavering heart, for Thou alone art holy and alone. Lord, have mercy. 
riches of the Savior illuminates us in the darkness of this life, that we may now walk honestly as in the day, driving out the passions of the night with the torch of abstinence, that we may behold with joy the splendor of the passion of Christ. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O company of the twelve apostles chosen by God, offer now to Christ your supplication, that we may all complete the course of the fast, saying our prayers with compunction and practicing the virtues with an eager heart. And so may we attain to see the glorious resurrection of Christ our God, bringing to him glory and praise, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Pray with the apostles of Theotokos to the incomprehensible Son and Word of God, who was born from thee in ways past speech and understanding, that he may bestow true peace upon the earth and grant us the forgiveness of our sins before the end, counting thy servants worthy of the heavenly kingdom in his boundless mercy. My native land, Holy Father, was Egypt. Already during the lifetime of my parents, when I was 12 years old, I renounced their love and went to Alexandria. I am ashamed to recall how there I at first ruined my maidenhood and then unrestrainedly and insatiably gave myself up to sensuality. It is more becoming to speak of this briefly so that you may just know my passion and my lechery. For about 17 years, forgive me, I lived like that. I was like a fire of public debauch. And it was not for the sake of gain. Here I speak the pure truth. Often when they wished to pay me, I refused the money. I acted in this way so as to make as many men as possible try to obtain me, doing free of charge what gave me pleasure. Do not think that I was rich, and that was the reason why I did not take money. I lived by begging, often by spinning flax, but I had an insatiable desire and an irrepressible passion for lying in filth. This was life to me. Every kind of abuse of nature I regarded as life. That is how I lived. Then one summer I saw a large crowd of Libyans and Egyptians running towards the sea. I asked one of them, where are these men hurrying to? He replied, they are all going to Jerusalem for the exaltation of the precious and life-giving cross, which takes place in a few days. I said to him, will they take me with them if I wish to go? No one will hinder you if you have money to pay for the journey and for food. And I said to him, to tell you the truth, I have no money, neither have I food. But I shall go with them and shall go aboard, and they shall feed me, whether they want to or not. I have a body. They shall take it instead of pay for the journey. I was suddenly filled with a desire to go, Abba, to have more lovers who could satisfy my passion. I told you, Abba Zosimus, not to force me to tell you of my disgrace. God is my witness. I am afraid of defiling you and the very air with my words. Zosimus, weeping, replied to her, Speak on for God's sake, mother. Speak and do not break the thread of such an edifying tale. And resuming her story, she went on. That youth, on hearing my shameless words, laughed and went off, while I, throwing away my spinning wheel, ran off towards the sea in the direction which everyone seemed to be taking. And seeing some young men standing on the shore, about ten or more of them, full of vigor and alert in their movements, I decided that they would do for my purpose. It seemed that some of them were waiting for more travelers whilst others had gone ashore. Shamelessly, as usual, I mixed with the crowd, saying, Take me with you to the place you are going to. You will not find me superfluous. I also added a few more words, calling forth general laughter. Seeing my readiness to be shameless, they readily took me aboard the boat. Those who were expected came also, and we set sail at once. How shall I relate to you what happened after this? Whose tongue can tell, whose ears can take in all that took place on the boat during that voyage? And to all this, I frequently forced those miserable youths even against their own will. There is no mentionable or unmentionable depravity of which I was not their teacher. I am amazed, Abba, how the sea stood our, our licentiousness, how the earth did not open its jaws, and how it was that hell did not swallow me alive when I had entangled in my net so many souls. But I think God was seeking my repentance, for he does not desire the death of a sinner, but magnanimously awaits his return to him. At last we arrived in Jerusalem. I spent the days before the festival in the town, living the same kind of life, perhaps even worse. I was not content with the youths I had seduced at sea and who had helped me to get to Jerusalem. Many others, citizens of the town and foreigners, I also seduced. 
The holy day of the exaltation of the cross dawned while I was still flying about, hunting for youths. At daybreak I saw that everyone was hurrying to the church, so I ran with the rest. When the hour for the holy elevation approached, I was trying to make my way in with the crowd which was struggling to get through the church doors. I had at last squeezed through with great difficulty almost to the entrance of the temple, from which the life-giving tree of the cross was being shown to the people. But when I trod on the doorstep which everyone passed, I was stopped by some force which prevented me entering. Meanwhile, I was brushed aside by the crowd and found myself standing alone in the porch. Thinking that this had happened because of my woman's weakness, I again began to work my way into the crowd, trying to elbow myself forward. But in vain I struggled. Again my feet trod on the doorstep over which others were entering the church without encountering any obstacle. I alone seemed to remain unaccepted by the church. It was as if there was a detachment of soldiers standing there to oppose my entrance. Once again I was excluded by the same mighty force, and again, and again I stood in the porch. Having repeated my attempt three or four times, at last I felt exhausted and had no more strength to push and to be pushed, so I went aside and stood in a corner of the porch. And only then, with great difficulty, it began to dawn on me, and I began to understand the reason why I was prevented from being admitted to see the life-giving cross. The word of salvation gently touched the eyes of my heart and revealed to me that it was my unclean life which barred the entrance to me. I began to weep and lament and beat my breast and to sigh from the depths of my heart. And so I stood weeping when I saw above me the icon of the most holy mother of God. And turning to her, my bodily and spiritual eyes, I said, O lady, mother of God, who gave birth in the flesh to God the word, I know, oh, how well I know, that it is no honor or praise to thee when one so impure and depraved as I look up to thy icon, O ever-virgin, who didst keep thy body and soul in purity. Rightly do I inspire hatred and disgust before thy virginal purity. But I have heard that God who was born of thee became man on purpose to call sinners to repentance. Then help me, for I have no other help. Order the entrance of the church to be open to me. Allow me to see the venerable tree on which he who was born of thee suffered in the flesh and on which he shed his holy blood for the redemption of sinners and for me, unworthy as I am. Be my faithful witness before thy son that I will never again defile my body by the impurity of fornication. But as soon as I have seen the tree of the cross, I will renounce the world and its temptations and will go wherever thou wilt lead me. Thus I spoke and as if acquiring some hope in firm faith and feeling some confidence in the mercy of the mother of God, I left the place where I stood praying. And I went again and mingled with the crowd that was pushing its way into the temple. And now no one seemed to thwart me, no one hindered my entering the church. I was possessed with trembling and was almost in delirium. Having got as far as the doors which I could not reach before, as if the same force which had hindered me cleared the way for me, I now entered without difficulty and found myself within the holy place. And so it was I saw the life-giving cross. I saw, too, the mysteries of God and how the Lord accepts repentance. Throwing myself on the ground, I worshipped that holy earth and kissed it with trembling. Then I came out of the church and went to her who had promised to be my security, to the place where I had sealed my vow. And bending my knees before the Virgin Mother of God, I addressed to her such words as these. O loving lady, thou hast shown me thy great love for all men. Glory to God who receives the repentance of sinners through thee. What more can I recollect or say, I who am so sinful? It is time for me, O lady, to fulfill my vow according to thy witness. Now lead me by the hand along the path of repentance. And at these words I heard a voice from on high. If you cross the Jordan, you will find glorious rest. Hearing this voice and having faith that it was for me, I cried to the mother of God, O lady, lady, do not forsake me. With these words, I left the porch of the church and set off on my journey. As I was leaving the church, a stranger glanced at me and gave me three coins, saying, Sister, take these. And taking the money, I bought three loaves and took them with me on my journey as a blessed gift. I asked the person who sold the bread, Which is the way to the Jordan? I was directed to the city gate, which led that way. 
Running on, I passed the gates, and still weeping went on my journey. Those I met, I asked the way, and after walking for the rest of that day, I think it was nine o'clock when, when I saw the cross. I at length reached at sunset the church of St. John the Baptist, which stood on the banks of the Jordan. After praying in the temple, I went down to the Jordan and rinsed my face and hands in its holy waters. I partook of the holy and life-giving mysteries in the church of the forerunner and ate half of one of my loaves. Then after drinking some water from Jordan, I lay down and passed the night on the ground. In the morning, I found a small boat and crossed to the opposite bank. I again prayed to Our Lady to lead me whither she wished. Then I found myself in this desert, and since then, up to this very day, I am estranged from all, keeping away from people and running away from everyone. And I live here, clinging to my God, who saves all who turn to him from faint-heartedness and storms. Zosimus asked her, How many years have gone by since you began to live in this desert? She replied, Forty-seven years have already gone by, I think, since I left the holy city. But what food do you find? The woman said, I had two and a half loaves when I crossed the Jordan. Soon they dried up and became hard as rock. Eating a little, I gradually finished them after a few years. Zosimus asked, Can it be that without getting ill you have lived so many years thus without suffering in any way from such a complete change? The woman answered, You remind me, Zosimus, of what I dare not speak of, for when I recall all the dangers which I overcame and all the violent thoughts which confused me, I am again afraid that they will take possession of me. Zosimus said, Do not hide from me anything. Speak to me without concealing anything. And she said to him, Believe me, Abba, seventeen years I passed in this desert, fighting wild beasts, mad desires and passions. When I was about to partake of food, I used to begin to regret the meat and fish of which I had so much in Egypt. I regretted also not having wine, which I loved so much. For I drank a lot of wine when I lived in the world, while here I had not even water. I used to burn and succumb with thirst. The mad desire for profligate songs also entered me and confused me greatly, edging me on to sing satanic songs which I had learned once. But when such desires entered me, I struck myself on the breast and reminded myself of the vow which I had made when going into the desert. In my thoughts I returned to the icon of the Mother of God which had received me, and to her I cried in prayer. I implored her to chase away the thoughts to which my miserable soul was succumbing. And after weeping for long and beating my breast, I used to see light at last which seemed to shine on me from everywhere. And after the violent storm, lasting calm descended. And how can I tell you about the thoughts which urged me on to fornication? How can I express them to you, Abba? A fire was kindled in my miserable heart which seemed to burn me up completely and to awaken me a thirst for embraces. As soon as this craving came to me, I flung myself on the earth and watered it with my tears as if I saw before me my witness who had appeared to me in my disobedience and who seemed to threaten punishment for the crime. And I did not rise from the ground. Sometimes I lay thus prostrate for a day and a night until a calm and sweet light descended and enlightened me and chased away the thoughts that possessed me. But always I turned the eyes of my mind to my protectress, asking her to extend help to one who was sinking fast in the ways of the desert. And I always had her as my helper and the acceptor of my repentance. And thus I lived for seventeen years amid constant dangers. And since then, even till now, the Mother of God helps me in everything and leads me as it were by the hand. Zosimus asked, Can it be that you did not need food and clothing? She answered, After finishing the loaves, I had, of which I spoke, for seventeen years I have fed on herbs and all that can be found in the desert. The clothes I had when I crossed the Jordan became torn and worn out. I suffered greatly from the cold and greatly from the extreme heat. At times the sun burned me up, and at other times I shivered from the frost, and frequently falling to the ground I lay without breath and without motion. I struggled with many afflictions and with terrible temptations. But from that time till now, the power of God in numerous ways has guarded my sinful soul and my humble body. When I only reflect on the evils from which our Lord has delivered me, I have imperishable food for hope of salvation. I am fed and clothed by the all-powerful word of God, the Lord of all. For it is not by bread alone that man lives, and those who have stripped off the rags of sin have no refuge, hiding themselves in the clefts of the rocks. Hearing that she cited words, from Scripture, from Moses and Job, Zosimus asked her, And so you have read the Psalms and other books. She smiled at this and said to the elder, Believe me, I have not seen a human face ever since I crossed the Jordan, 
except yours today. I have not seen a beast or a living being ever since I came into the desert. I never learned from books. I have never even heard anyone who sang and read from them. But the word of God, which is alive and active by itself, teaches a man knowledge. And so this is the end of my tale. But as I asked you in the beginning, so even now I implore you for the sake of the incarnate word of God to pray to the Lord for me, who am such a sinner. Thus concluding her tale, she bowed down before him, and with tears the elder exclaimed, Blessed is God who creates the great and wondrous, the glorious and marvelous without end. Blessed is God who has shown me how he rewards those who fear him. Truly, O Lord, thou dost not forsake those who seek thee. And the woman, not allowing the elder to bow down before her, said, I beg you, Holy Father, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our God and Savior, tell no one what you have heard until God delivers me of this earth, and now depart in peace, and again next year you shall see me, and I you, if God will preserve us in his great mercy. But for God's sake, do as I ask you. Next year during Lent, do not... During Lent, do not cross the Jordan, as is your custom in the monastery. Zosimus was amazed to hear that she knew the rules of the monastery and could only say, Glory to God who bestows great gifts on those who love him. She continued, Remain, Abba, in the monastery, and even if you wish to depart, you will not be able to do so. And at sunset of the holy day of the Last Supper, put some of the life-giving body and blood of Christ into a holy vessel worthy to hold such mysteries for me and bring it. And wait for me on the banks of the Jordan, adjoining the inhabited parts of the land, so that I can come and partake of the life-giving gifts. For since the time I communicated in the temple of the forerunner before crossing the Jordan, even to this day, I have not approached the holy mysteries. And I thirst for them with irrepressible love and longing. And therefore, I ask and implore you to grant me my wish, bringing me the life-giving mysteries at the very hour when our Lord made his disciples partake of his divine supper. Tell John the abbot of the monastery where you live. Look to yourself and to your brothers, for there is much that needs correction. Only do not say this now, but when God guides you, pray for me. With these words, she vanished in the depths of the desert, and Zosimus, falling down on his knees and bowing down to the ground on which she had stood, sent up glory and thanks to God. And after wandering through the desert, he returned to the monastery on the day all the brothers returned. For the whole year he kept silent, not daring to tell anyone of what he had seen. But in his soul he prayed to God to give him another chance of seeing the ascetic's dear face. And when at length the first Sunday of the great fast came, all went out into the desert with the customary prayers and the singing of psalms. Only Zosimus was held back by illness. He lay in a fever. And then he remembered what the saint had said to him. And even if you wish to depart, you will not be able to do so. Many days passed, and at last recovering from his illness, he remained in the monastery. And when again the monks returned and the day of the Last Supper dawned, he did as he had been ordered. And placing some of the most pure body and blood into a small chalice and putting some figs and dates and lentils soaked in water into a small basket, he departed for the desert and reached the banks of the Jordan and sat down to wait for the saint. He waited for a long while and then began to doubt. Then raising his eyes to heaven, he began to pray. Grant me, O Lord, to behold that which thou hast allowed me to behold once. Do not let me depart in vain, bearing the burden of my sins. And then another thought struck him. And what if she does come? There is no boat. How will she cross the Jordan to come to me who am so unworthy? And as he was pondering thus, he saw the holy woman appear and stand on the other side of the river. Zosimus got up, rejoicing and glorifying and thanking God. And again the thought came to him that she could not cross the Jordan. Then, she saw, then he saw that she made the sign of the cross over the waters of the Jordan, and the night was a moonlit one, as he related afterwards. And then she at once stepped onto the waters and began moving across the surface towards him. And when he wanted to prostrate himself, she cried to him while still walking on the water, What are you doing, Abba? You are a priest and carrying the divine gifts. He obeyed her, and on reaching the shore, she said to the elder, Bless, Father, bless me. He answered her trembling, for a state of confusion had overcome him at the sight of the miracle. Truly God did not lie when he promised that when we purify ourselves, we shall be like him. Glory to thee, Christ our God, who has shown me through this thy slave how far away I stand from perfection. Here the woman asked him to pray the, to say the creed and our father. He began. She finished the prayer and according to the custom of that time, gave him the kiss of peace on the lips. Having partaken of the holy mysteries, she raised her hands to heaven and sighed with tears in her eyes, exclaiming, 
Now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, O Lord, according to thy word, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation. Then she said to the elder, Forgive me, Abba, for asking you, but fulfill another wish of mine. Go now to the monastery and let God's grace guard you, and next year come again to the same place where I first met you. Come for God's sake, for you shall again see me, for such is the will of God. He said to her, From this day on I would like to follow you and always see your holy face. But now fulfill the one and only wish of an old man and take a little of the food I have brought for you. And he showed her the basket, while she just touched the lintels with the tips of her fingers and taking three grains, said that the Holy Spirit guards the substance of the soul unpolluted. Then she said, Pray for God's sake, pray for me, and remember a, mi a miserable wretch. Touching the saint's feet and asking for her prayers for the church, the kingdom, and himself, he let her depart with tears, while he went off sighing and sorrowful, for he could not hope to vanquish the invincible. Meanwhile, she again made the sign of the cross over the Jordan, and stepped onto the waters and crossed over as before. And the elder returned, filled with joy and terror, accusing himself of not having asked the saint her name. But he decided to do so next year. And when another year had passed, he again went into the desert. He reached the same spot, but could see no sign of anyone. So raising his eyes to heaven as before, he prayed, Show me, O Lord, thy pure treasure, which thou hast concealed in the desert. Show me, I pray thee, thy angel in the flesh, of which the world is not worthy. Then on the opposite bank of the river, her face turned towards the rising sun. He saw the saint lying dead. Her hands were crossed according to custom, and her face was turned to the east. Running up, he shed tears over the saint's feet and kissed them, not daring to touch anything else. For a long time he wept, then reciting the appointed psalms, he said the burial prayers and thought to himself, Must I bury the body of a saint, or will this be contrary to her wishes? And then he saw words traced on the ground by her head, Abazosimus, bury on this spot the body of humble Mary. Return to dust that which is dust, and pray to the Lord for me who departed in the month of Fermutin of Egypt, called April by the Romans, on the first day, on the very night of our Lord's Passion, after having partaken of the divine mysteries. Reading this, the elder was glad to know the saint's name. He understood, too, that as soon as she had partaken of the divine mysteries on the shore of the Jordan, she was at once transported to the place where she died. The distance which Zosimus had taken twenty days to cover, Mary had evidently traversed in an hour, and had at once surrendered her soul to God. Then Zosimus thought, It is time to do as she wished, but how am I to dig a grave with nothing in my hands? And then he saw nearby a small piece of wood left by some traveler in the desert. Picking it up, he began to dig the ground, but the earth was hard and dry and did not yield to the efforts of the elder. He grew tired and covered with sweat. He sighed from the depths of his soul, and lifting up his eyes, he saw a big lion standing close to the saint's body and licking her feet. At the sight of the lion, he trembled with fear, especially when he called to mind Mary's words that she had never seen wild beasts in the desert. But guarding himself with the sign of the cross, the thought came to him that the power of the one lying there would protect him and keep him unharmed. Meanwhile, the lion drew nearer to him, expressing affection by every movement. Zosimus said to the lion, The great one ordered that her body was to be buried, but I am old and have not the strength to dig the grave for I have no spade, and it would take too long to go and get one. So can you carry out the work with your claws? Then we can commit to the earth the mortal temple of the saint. While he was still speaking, the lion with his front paws began to dig a hole deep enough to bury the body. Again the elder washed the feet of the saint with his tears, and calling on her to pray for all, covered the body with earth in the presence of the lion. It was as it had been, naked and uncovered by anything but the tattered cloak which had been given to her by Zosimus, and with which Mary, turning away, had managed to cover part of her body. Then both departed. The lion went off into the depth of the desert like a lamb, while Zosimus returned to the monastery, glorifying and blessing Christ our Lord. And on reaching the monastery, he told all the brothers about everything, and all marveled on hearing of God's miracles. And with fear and love, they kept the memory of the saint. Abbot John, as St. Mary had previously told Abba Zosimus, found a number of things wrong in the monastery and got rid of them with God's help. And St. Zosimus died in the same monastery, almost attaining the age of a hundred, and passed to eternal life. 
The monks kept this story without writing it down and passed it on by word of mouth to one another. But I, add St. Sophronius, as soon as I heard it, wrote it down. Perhaps someone else better informed has already written the life of the saint, but as far as I could, I have recorded everything, putting truth above all else. May God, who works amazing miracles and generously bestows gifts on those who turn to him with faith, reward those who seek light for themselves in this story, who hear, read, and are zealous to write it. And may he grant them the lot of blessed Mary, together with all who at different times have pleased God by their pious thoughts and labors. And let us also give glory to God, the eternal King, that he may grant us too his mercy in the day of judgment for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom belongs all glory, honor, dominion, and adoration with the eternal Father and the most holy and life-giving Spirit, now and always and throughout all ages. Amen.
the mind that sees God, so shalt thou reach by contemplation the innermost darkness and gain great merchandise. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. The great patriarch had the twelve patriarchs as children, and so he mystically established for thee, my soul, a ladder of ascent through action, in his wisdom setting his children as steps by which thou canst mount upwards. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Thou hast rivaled Esau the hated, O my soul, and given thy birthright, given the birthright of thy first beauty to the supplanter. Thou hast lost thy father's blessing, and in thy wretchedness been twice supplanted in action and in knowledge. Therefore repent now. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Esau was called Edom because of his raging lust for women, burning always with unrestrained desires and stained with sensual pleasure. He was named Edom, which means the red heat of a soul that loves sin. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Thou hast heard, O my soul, of Job justified on a dunghill, but thou hast not imitated his fortitude. In all thine experiences and trials and temptations, thou hast not kept firmly to thy purpose, but hast proved inconstant. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Once he sat upon a throne, but now he sits upon a dunghill, naked and covered with sores. Once he was blessed with many children and admired by all, but suddenly he is childless and homeless. Yet he counted the dunghill as a palace and his sores as pearls. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. A man of great wealth and righteous, abounding in riches and cattle, clothed in royal dignity, in crown and purple robe, Job became suddenly a beggar, stripped of wealth, glory, and kingship. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. If he who was righteous and blameless above all men did not escape the snares and pits of the deceiver, what wilt thou do, wretched and sin-loving soul, when some sudden misfortune befalls thee? Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I have defiled my body, I have stained my spirit, and I am all covered with wounds. But as physician, O Christ, heal both body and spirit for me through repentance. Wash, purify, and cleanse me, O my Savior, and make me whiter than snow. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Thy body and thy blood, O word, thou hast offered at thy crucifixion for the sake of all. Thy body to refashion me, thy blood to wash me clean. And thou hast given up thy spirit, O Christ, to bring me to thy Father. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Creator, thou hast worked salvation in the midst of the earth, that we might be saved. Thou wast crucified of thine own will upon the tree, and Eden closed till then was opened. Things above and things below, the creation and all peoples, have been saved and worshipped thee. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. May the blood from thy side be to me a cleansing fount, and may the water that flows with it be a drink of forgiveness. May I be purified by both, O word, anointed and refreshed, having as prism and drink thy words of life. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I am deprived of the bridal chamber, of the wedding and the supper. For want of oil, my lamp has gone out. While I slept, the door was closed. The supper has been eaten. I am bowed hand and foot and cast out. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. As a chalice, O my Savior, the Church has been granted thy life-giving side, from which there flows down to us a twofold stream of forgiveness and knowledge, representing the two covenants, the old and the new. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. The time of my life is short, filled with trouble and evil, but accept me in repentance and call me back to knowledge. 
Let me not become the possession and food of the enemy, but do thou, O Savior, take pity on me. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Now I speak boastfully, with boldness of heart, yet all to no purpose and in vain. O righteous judge, who alone art compassionate, do not condemn me with the Pharisee, but grant me the abasement of the publican, and number me with him. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I know, O compassionate Lord, that I have sinned and violated the vessel of my flesh, but accept me in repentance, and call me back to knowledge. Let me not become the possession and food of the enemy, but do thou, O Savior, take pity on me. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I have become mine own idol, utterly defiling my soul with the passions, O compassionate Lord. But accept me in repentance and call me back to knowledge. Let me not become the possession and food of the enemy, but to thou, O Savior, take pity on me. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I have not hearkened to thy voice, I have not heeded thy scripture, O giver of the law, but accept me in repentance and call me back to knowledge. Let me not become the possession and food of the enemy, but to thou, O Savior, take pity on me. Venerable Mother Mary, pray to God for us. Thou hast lived a bodiless life in the body, O Holy Mary, and thou hast received great grace from God. Protect us who honor thee with faith, and we entreat thee, deliver us by thy prayers from every trial. Venerable Mother Mary, pray to God for us. Thou wast brought down into an abyss of great iniquity, yet not held fast within it, but with better intent thou hast mounted through action to the height of virtue, past all expectation, and the angels, O Mary, were amazed at thee. Venerable Father Andrew, pray to God for us. O Andrew, renowned among the fathers, glory of Crete, thou standest before the Trinity, supreme in Godhead. In thy prayers, do not forget to ask that we may be delivered from torment, for we call upon thee with love as our advocate. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Divided in essence, unconfused in persons, I confess thee as God, triune deity, one in kingship and throne, and to thee I raise the great thrice holy hymn that is sung on high. Now and ever and unto ages of ages, amen. Thou givest birth and art a virgin, and in both thou remainest by nature inviolate. He who is born makes new the laws of nature, and thy womb brings forth without travail. When God so wills, the natural order is overcome, for he does whatever he wishes. Keeping vigil through the night, O lover of man, I pray thee enlighten me. covered me with darkness and thick mist, but make me, O Savior, a son of the day. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. In my misery I have followed Reuben's example and have devised a wicked and lawful plan against the Most High God, defiling my bed as he defiled his father's. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I have sinned, I have sinned like the brethren of Joseph, who once sold the fruit of purity and chastity. 
Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. As the figure of the Lord, O my soul, the righteous and gentle Joseph was sold into bondage by his brethren, but thou hast sold thyself entirely to thy sins. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. The miserable and wicked soul, imitate the righteous and pure mind of Joseph, and do not live in wantonness, Sinfully indulging thy disordered desires. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Once Joseph was cast into a pit, O Lord and Master, as a figure of thy burial and resurrection. But what offering such as this shall I ever make to thee? Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Thou hast heard, my soul, of the basket of Moses, how he was born on the waves of the river, as if in a shrine, and so he avoided the bitter execution of Pharaoh's decree. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Thou hast heard, wretched soul, of the midwives who once killed in its infancy the manly action of self-control, like great Moses then be suckled on wisdom. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Miserable soul, thou hast not struck and killed the Egyptian mind, as did Moses the Great. Tell me then, how wilt thou go to dwell through repentance in the wilderness empty of passions? Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Moses the Great went to dwell in the desert, come seek to follow his way of life, my soul that in contemplation thou mayest attain the vision of God in the bush. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Picture to thyself, my soul, the rod of Moses, striking the sea and making hard the deep, by the sign of the Holy Cross. Through the cross thou also canst do great things. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Fire that was blameless and undefiled, but Hophni and Phinehas brought to him as thou hast done my soul strange fire in a polluted life. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. In my soul and body, O Master, I have become like James and John Brace, the magicians of cruel Pharaoh. My will is heavy and my mind is drowned beneath the waters, but do thou come to my aid. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Woe is me, I have defiled my mind with filth. I pray to thee, O Master, wash me clean in the waters of my tears, and make the garment of my flesh white as snow. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. When I examine my actions, O Savior, I see that I have gone beyond all men in sin, for I knew and understood what I did, I was not sinning in ignorance. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Spare, O spare the work of thine hands, O Lord. I have sinned, forgive me, for thou alone art pure by nature, and none save thee is free from defilement. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Thou, Lord God, O Savior, wast for my sake fashioned as I am. Thou hast performed miracles, healing lepers, giving strength to the paralyzed, stopping the issue of blood when the woman touched the hem of thy garment. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O wretched soul, do as the woman with an issue of blood, run quickly, grasp the hem of the garment of Christ, so shalt thou be healed of thine afflictions, and hear him say, Thy faith has saved thee. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O my soul, do as the woman who was bowed to the ground. Fall at the feet of Jesus, that he may make thee straight again, and thou shalt walk upright upon the paths of the Lord. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Thou art a deep well, O Master. Make springs gush forth for me from thy pure veins, that like the woman of Samaria, I may drink and thirst no more, for from thee flow the streams of life. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Master and Lord, may my tears be unto me as Siloam, that I also may wash clean the eyes of my soul, 
and with my mind behold thee the pre-eternal lives. Venerable Mother Mary, pray to God for us. Blessed Saint, with a love beyond compare, thou hast longed to venerate the wood of life, and thy desire was granted. Make me also worthy to attain the glory on high. Venerable Mother Mary, pray to God for us. In the stream of Jordan, thou hast found peace, escaping from the deadening pleasures of the flesh. Deliver us also from them, Holy Mary, by thine intercession. Venerable Father Andrew, pray to God for us. Best of shepherds, chosen above all others, O wise Andrew, with great love and fear I beseech thee. Thou, thine intercessions, may I receive salvation and eternal life. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Glorify thee, O Trinity, the one God. Holy, holy, holy art thou, Father, Son, and Spirit. Simple essence and unity, worshipped forever. Now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Violet and mother who has not known man, from thee has God, the creator of the ages, taken human flesh, uniting to himself the nature of man. From the depths of hell, I cry. of my heart crying, I have sinned against thee, O God, be merciful to me. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Like Dathan and Abiram, O my soul, thou hast become a stranger to thy Lord, but with all thy heart cry out, spare me that the earth may not open and swallow thee up. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Raging as a maddened heifer, O oh my soul, thou art become like a threm, as a heart from the nets rescue then thy life, gaining wings through action and the mind's contemplation. Have mercy on me, O oh God, have mercy on me. O oh my soul, the hand of Moses shall be our assurance, proving that God can cleanse a life full of leprosy, and make it white as snow. So do not despair of thyself, though thou art leper. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. The waves of my sins, O Savior, have returned and suddenly engulfed me, as the waters of the Red Sea engulfed the Egyptians of old and their charioteers. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Like Israel before thee, thou hast made a foolish choice, my soul. Instead of the divine manna, thou hast senselessly preferred the pleasure-loving gluttony of the passion. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O my soul, thou hast valued the wells of Canaanite thoughts more than the veined rock, Jesus, the fountain of wisdom from which flow the rivers of divine knowledge. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. The swine's meat, the flesh pots, and the food of Egypt, thou hast preferred my soul to the food of heaven, as the ungrateful people did of old in the wilderness. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. When thy servant Moses struck the rock with his rod, he prefigured thy life-giving side, O Savior, from which we all draw the water of life. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Like Joshua, the son of Nun, search and spy out my soul, the land of thine inheritance, and take up thy dwelling within it, 
through obedience to the law. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Rise up and make war against the passions of the flesh, as Joshua against Amalek, ever gaining the victory over the Gibeonites, thy deceitful thought. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O my soul, pass through the flowing waters of time like the ark of old, and take possession of the land of promise, for God commands thee. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. As thou hast saved Peter when he cried out, Save me, come quickly, O Savior, before it is too late, and save me from the beast. Stretch out thine hand and lead me up from the deep of sin. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I know thee as a calm haven, O Lord, Lord Christ. Come quickly before it is too late, and deliver me from the lowest depths of sin and despair. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O Savior, I am the coin marked with the king's likeness, which thou hast lost of old. But, O word, light thy lamp, thy forerunner, and seek and find again thine image. Venerable Mother Mary, pray to God for us. My soul on fire, O Mary, thou hast ever shed streams of tears to quench the burning of the passions. Grant the grace of these thy tears to me also, thy servant. Venerable Mother Mary, pray to God for us. Through the perfection of thine earthly life, O Mother, thou hast gained a heavenly freedom from the sinfulness of passion. In thine intercessions, pray that this same freedom may be given to those who sing thy praises. Venerable Father Andrew, pray to God for us. Shepherd and Bishop of Crete, intercessor for the inhabited earth, to thee I run, O Andrew, and I cry, deliver me, Father, from the depths of sin. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. I am the Trinity, simple and undivided, yet divided in persons, and I am the unity by nature one, says the Father and the Son and the Divine Spirit. Now and ever and unto ages of ages, amen. Thy womb bore God for us, fashioned in our shape. O Theotokos, pray to him as the creator of all, that we may be justified through thine intercession. From the depths of hell, I cried with all my heart to the merciful God, and he heard me, and he raised up my life from corruption. 
Christ's house of healing opened and health flowing down from it upon Adam. The devil suffered and was wounded. Then he wailed as if in mortal danger, and to his friends he raised a bitter howl. What shall I do to the son of Mary? I am slain by the man from Bethlehem, who is everywhere present and fillest all things. Remember us, O Lord, when thou comest in thy kingdom. Christ, remember me, thou hast made him a citizen of paradise, unworthy though I am. Grant me to repent like him. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. beheld the Lord in a vision, and then received from his barren wife the fruit of God's promise. Let us imitate him in his devotion. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Emulating Samson's lawfulness, O my soul, thou hast been shorn of the glory of thy works, and through love of pleasure thou hast betrayed thy life to the alien Philistines, surrendering thy chastity and blessedness. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. He who at the first overthrew the Philistine with the jawbone of an ass, then wasted his life in passionate lusts. Flee, O my soul, from his example, flee from his actions and his weakness. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be Jephthah, the captains, with Deborah, who had a man's courage, were chosen as judges of Israel. Learn bravery from their mighty acts, O my soul, and be strong. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. O my soul, thou knowest the manly courage of Jael, who of old pierced Sisera through his temple, and brought salvation to Israel with the nail of her tent. In this thou mayest see a prefiguring of the cross. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Offer my soul a sacrifice worthy of praise. Offer thine action as an oblation, purer than the daughter of Jephthah. And as a victim for thy Lord, slay the passions of thy flesh. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. O oh, my soul, consider the fleece of Gideon and receive the dew from heaven. Bend down like a heart and drink the waters that flow from the law when the, its letter is wrung out for thee through study. 
condemnation of Eli the priest, thoughtlessly thou hast allowed the passions to work evil within thee, just as he permitted his children to commit transgressions. Blessed are you, and men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. In the book of Judges of my soul, the Levite divided his wife limb from limb and sent the parts of her body to the twelve tribes of Israel. And so he made known the lawless outrage committed by the men of Benjamin. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. Hannah, who loved self-restraint and chastity when speaking to God, moved her lips in praise, but her voice was not heard, and she who was barren bore a son worthy of her prayer. Remember us, O Lord, when thou comest in thy kingdom. Great Samuel, the son of Hannah, was born at Ramah and brought up in the house of the Lord. And he was numbered among the judges of Israel. Eagerly follow his example, O my soul, and before thou judgest us others, judge thine own works. Remember us, O Master, when thou comest in thy kingdom. David was chosen to be a king and anointed for his royal office with the horn of divine oil. If thou, my soul, desirest the kingdom on high, anoint thyself with the oil of tears. Remember us, O Holy One, when thou comest in thy kingdom. Have mercy upon thy creation, merciful Lord, take pity on the work of thy hands. Spare those who have sinned, O spare me, who more than all others have despised thy commandments. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The birth of the Son and the procession of the Spirit, I worship the Father who begets, I glorify the Son who is begotten, and I sing the praises of the Holy Spirit who shines forth with the Father and the Son. Now and ever, and unto ages of ages, Amen. O Mother of God, we venerate thy child bearing in ways past nature, yet we do not divide into the natural glory of thy Son. He is confessed as one person in two natures. sins have I progressed, and to my sores I have added wounds, but in thy compassion have mercy upon me, O God of our fathers. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. The secrets of my heart have I confessed to thee, my judge. See my abasement, see my affliction, and attend to my judgment now, and in thy compassion have mercy upon me, O God of our fathers. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Saul once lost his father's asses, in searching for them he found himself proclaimed as a king. But watch my soul, lest unknown to thyself thou prefer thine animal appetites to the kingdom of Christ. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. David, the forefather of God, once sinned doubly, pierced by the arrow of adultery and the spear of murder. But thou, my soul, art more gravely sick than he, far worse, for worse than any acts are the impulses of thy will. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. David once joined sin to sin, adding murder to fornication, 
Yet then he showed at once a twofold repentance. But thou, my soul, hast done worse things than he, yet thou hast not repented before God. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. David once composed a hymn, setting forth, as in an icon, the action he had done, and he condemned it, crying, Have mercy upon me, for against thee only have I sinned, O God of all. Do thou cleanse me. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. When the ark was being carried in a cart, and the ox stumbled, Uzzah did no more than touch it, but the wrath of God smote him. O my soul, flee from his presumption, and respect with reverence the things of God. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Thou hast heard of Absalom, and how he rebelled against nature. Thou knowest of the unholy deeds by which he defiled his father David's bed, yet thou hast followed him in his passionate and sensual desires. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Thy free dignity, O my soul, thou hast subjected to thy body, for thou hast found in the enemy another Ahitophel, and hast agreed to all his counsels, but Christ himself has brought them to nothing and saved thee from them all. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Solomon the Wonderful, who was full of grace, full of the grace of wisdom, once did evil in the sight of heaven, and turned away from God. Thou hast become like him, O my soul, through thine accursed life. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Carried away by sensual passions, he defiled himself. Alas, the lover of wisdom became a lover of harlots and a stranger to God. And thou, my soul, in thy mind, hast imitated him through thy shameful desires. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O my soul, thou hast rivaled Rehoboam, who paid no attention to his father's counselors, and Jeroboam, that evil servant and renegade of old. But flee from their example and cry to God, I have sinned, take pity on me. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Alas, my soul, thou hast rivaled Ahab in guilt. Thou hast become the dwelling place of fleshly defilements and a shameful vessel of the passions, but grown from the depths of thy heart and confess thy sins to God. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Elijah once destroyed with fire twice fifty of Jezebel's servants, and he slew the prophets of shame as a rebuke to Ahab, but flee from the example of both of them, my soul, and be strong. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Heaven is closed to thee, my soul, and a famine from God has seized thee, for thou hast been disobedient as Ahab was to the words of Elijah the Tishbite, but imitate the widow of Zarephath and feed the prophet's soul. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. By deliberate choice, my soul, thou hast incurred the guilt of Manasseh, setting up the passions as idols and multiplying abominations, but with fervent heart emulate his repentance and acquire compunction. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I fall before thee, and as tears I offer thee my words, I have sinned as the harlot never sinned, and I have transgressed as no other man on earth, but take pity on thy creature, O master, and call me back. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I have discolored thine image and broken thy commandment. All my beauty is destroyed and my lamp is quenched by the passions. O Savior, but take pity upon me as David sings and restore to me thy joy. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Turn back, repent, uncover all that thou hast hidden. Say unto God, to whom all things are known, Thou alone knowest my secrets, O Savior. Have mercy upon me, as David sings, according to thy mercy. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. My days have vanished as the dream of one awaking, and so, like Hezekiah, I weep upon my bed, that years may be added to my life. But what Isaiah will come to thee, my soul, except the God of all? Venerable Mother Mary, pray to God for us. Raising thy cry to the pure Mother of God, thou hast driven back the fury of the passions that violently assailed thee, 
and put to shame the enemy who sought to make thee stumble, but give thy help in trouble now to me also thy servant. Venerable Mother Mary, pray to God for us. He whom thou hast loved, O Mother, whom thou hast desired, in whose footsteps thou hast followed, he it was who found thee and gave thee repentance, for he is God, a compassionate. Pray to him without ceasing that we may be delivered from passions and distress. Venerable Father Andrew, pray to God for us. Set me firmly on the rock of faith, O Father, through thine intercessions. Fence me round about with the fear of God, O Andrew. Grant repentance to me now, I beseech thee, and deliver me from the snare of the enemies that seek my life. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O simple and undivided Trinity, one consubstantial nature, thou art praised as light and lights, one holy and three holies. Sing, O my soul, and glorify life and lives, the God of all. Now and ever and unto ages of ages, amen. We praise thee, we bless thee, we venerate thee, O Mother of God, for thou hast given birth to one of the undivided trinity, thy Son and God, and thou hast opened the heavenly places to us on earth. of the word which have caused the ill-founded walls of the enemy to fall and have firmly established the ramparts of knowledge of God. Have mercy on me, O oh God, have mercy on me. With the mantle of Elijah, Elisha, may the streams of Jordan stand still on either side, but in this grace my soul does no share by reason of thy greed and in trial desire. Have mercy on me, O oh God, have mercy on me. Elisha once took up the mantle of Elijah and received a double portion of grace from the Lord. In this grace, my soul, thou hast no share by reason like greed and uncontrolled desire. Have mercy on me, O oh God, have mercy on me. The Shunammite woman gladly entertained the righteous prophet. But in thy house, my soul, thou wast not, not as welcome a stranger or traveler. So thou shalt be cast out weeping from the bridal chamber. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O wretched soul, always thou hast imitated the polluted thoughts of Gehazi. Cast me at least in thine old age, his love of money. Flee from the fire of hell, turn away from thy wickedness. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Thou hast followed Josiah, my soul, and hast his leprosy in double form. For thy thoughts are wicked, and thine ark acts unlawful. Leave what thou hast, and return. And hasten to repent him. Have mercy on me, O oh God, have mercy on me. O oh my soul, thou hast heard well the men of Nineveh repented before God in sackcloth and ashes. Yet thou hast not followed them, but art more wicked than all who sin before the Lord after. Have mercy on me, O oh God, have mercy on me. Thou hast heard my soul, how Jeremiah in the muddy pit cried out with lamentations for the city of Zion and asked to be given near tears. All his life with lamentation and be saved. Have mercy on me, O oh God, have mercy on me. Jonah fled to Tarshish, foreseeing the conversion of the men of Nineveh. For as a prophet, he knew the loving kindness of God, but he was jealous that his prophecy should not be proved false. Have mercy on me, O oh God, have mercy on me. My soul, thou hast heard how Daniel stopped the mouth of the wild, the wild beast, and the lion's den. Thou knowest how the children with Azarias were 
Quench the fruit of the the flames of fiery furnace. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. All the names of the Old Testament I set before thee, my soul, as an example, imitate the holy acts of the righteous and flee from the sins of the wicked. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O righteous judge and Savior, have mercy on me and deliver me from the fire that threatens me, and the punishment that I deserve to suffer at the judgment. For then comes grant me remission through virtue and repentance. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Like the thief, I cry to thee, remember me. Like Peter, I weep bitterly. Like the publican, I call out, forgive me, my Savior. <coughs> like the harlot, I shed tears. Accept my lamentations, once thou accept the retreaties, O woman of Canaan. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O Savior, heal the purification of my humble soul. For thou art the one physician that apply plaster. When oil and wine works of repentance and compunction with tears. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Like the woman of Canaan, I cry to thee, have mercy on me, son of David. Like the woman with an issue of blood, I touch the hem of thy garment. Because Martha, we have his Martha and Mary wept for Lazarus. Have mercy on me, <coughs> God, have mercy on me. For this precious ointment, O Savior, I empty on thy head the alabaster box of my tears. Like the holiday, I cry out to thee, seeking mercy. I bring my prayer and I ask to receive forgiveness. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. No one has sinned against thee as I have, yet except even the company. Compassionate Savior, for I repent in fear and cry with longing. Against thee alone have I sinned, I have transgressed, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Spare the work of thine own hands, O Savior, and O shepherd, she can seek the lost sheep that has been gone astray. Snatch me from the wolf and make me a nursling in the pasture of thine own flock. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. When thou sittest upon thy throne, O merciful judge, and revealest thy dread glory, O Christ, what fear there will be then, when the furnace burns with fire, and I'll shrink back in terror before thy judgment seat. Venerable Mother Mary, pray to God for us. The Mother of the Light that never sets illumine thee and free thee from the darkness of the passions, O Mary, who has received the grace of the Spirit, give light to those who praise thee with faith. Venerable Mother Mary, pray to God for us. The holy Zaz must have struck with amazement, O Mother, beholding in thee a wonder truly strange and new. For I saw an angel in the body and was filled with astonishment, praising Christ unto all ages. Venerable Father Mary, pray to God for us. Since thou hast boldness before the Lord, O Andrew, honored and renowned of grief, Beseech thee to see that I may find deliverance from the bonds of iniquity through thy prayers, O teacher, glory, and holy monk. We bless the Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Father, without beginning, co eternal Son, and loving Comforter, the Spirit of righteousness, begetter of the Word of God, Word of the Eternal Father, Spirit living and creative, which one in the unity have mercy on me. Now and ever and unto ages of ages, Amen. As from purple silk, O undefiled virgin, the spiritual robe of Emmanuel, whose flesh was woven in thy womb, that we honor thee as fair, so blessed and very true. We praise, bless, and worship the Lord, singing and exalting him throughout all the ages.
mercies in God my Savior. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Without corruption thou gavest birth to God the Word. To Theotokos we magnify thee. For he has regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, as for the generations will call me blessed. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Without corruption thou gavest birth to God the Word. True Theotokos we magnify thee. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Without corruption thou gavest birth to God the Word. Truth, Theotokos, we magnify thee. He has shown strength with his army and scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. More honorable than the cherubim and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Without corruption thou gavest birth to God the Word. Through Theotokos we magnify thee. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of low degree. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent empty away. More honorable than the cherubim and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Without corruption thou gavest birth to God the Word. True Theotokos we magnify thee. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. As he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his posterity forever. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Without corruption thou gavest birth to God the Word. Truth, they all took us, we magnify thee. Conception without seed, birth past understanding, from a mother who never knew a man, childbearing undefiled, for nature is real. My speech has lost its power. My life is dead. The end is at the door. What shall thou do then, miserable soul, when the judge comes to examine thy deeds? Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I have put before thee, my soul, Moses' account of the creation of the world, and after that all the recognized scriptures that tell thee the story of the righteous and the wicked. But thou, my soul, hast followed the second of these, and not the first, and has sinned against God. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. The law 
pass powerless. The gospel is no effect. The whole of scripture is ignored by thee. The prophets and all the words of the righteous are useless. Thy wounds, O my soul, have been multiplied, and there is no physician to heal thee. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I bring thee, O my soul, examples from the New Testament to lead thee to compunction. Follow the example of the righteous. Turn away from sin. And through the prayers and fasting, through chastity and reverence, win back Christ's mercy. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Christ became man, calling to repentance, thieves and harlots. Repent, my soul, the door of the kingdom is already open, and the Pharisees and publicans and adulterers pass through it before thee, changing their life. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Christ became a child and shared in my flesh, and willingly he performed all that belongs to my nature, only without sin. He set before thee, my soul, an example and an image of his condescension. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Christ saved the wise men and called the shepherds. He revealed as martyrs a multitude of young children. He glorified the elder and the aged widow. Thou, my soul, has not followed their lives and actions. Woe to thee when thou art judged. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. The Lord fasted forty days in the wilderness, and at the end of them he was hungry, thus showing that he was a man. Do not be dismayed, my soul. If the enemy attacks thee through prayer and fasting, drive him away. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Christ, being tempted, the devil tempted him, showing him the stones that they might be made bread. He led him up into a mountain to see in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. O oh, my soul, look with fear on what happened. Watch and pray every hour to God. Have mercy on me, O oh God, have mercy on me. The dove who loved the wilderness, the lamp of Christ, the voice of one crying aloud was heard preaching repentance. But Herod sinned with Herodias, O oh, my soul. See that thou art not trapped in the snare of the transgressors, but embrace repentance. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. The forerunner of grace went to dwell in the wilderness, and Judea and all Samaria ran to hear him. They confessed their sins and were baptized eagerly, but thou, my soul, has not imitated them. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Marriage is honorable and the marriage bed undefiled, for on both Christ has given his blessing, eating in the flesh at the wedding in Cana, turning water into wine and revealing his first miracle to bring thee, my soul, to a change of life. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Christ gave strength to the paralyzed man and he took up his bed. He raised from the dead the young man, the son of the widow and the centurion's servant. He appeared to the woman of Samaria and spoke to thee, my soul, of worship in spirit. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. By the touch of the hem of his garment, the Lord healed the woman with an issue of blood. He cleansed lepers and gave sight to the blind and made the lame walk upright. He cured by his word the deaf and the dumb, and the woman bowed to the ground to bring the wretched soul to salvation. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Sickness, Christ the Word preached the good tidings of, to the poor. He cured the crippled, ate with publicans, and conversed with sinners. With the touch of his hand, he brought back the departed soul of Jairus' daughter. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. The publican was saved, and the harlot turned to chastity, but the Pharisee with his boasting was condemned. For the first cried, Be merciful, the second, Have mercy on me, and the third said, Boasting, I thank thee, O God and other such words of madness. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Zacchaeus was a publican, yet he was saved, but Simon the Pharisee went astray, while the harlot received remission and release from him, who has the power to forgive sins, O my soul, gain his mercy. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O wretched soul, thou hast not acted like the harlot who took the alabaster box of precious ointment and anointed with tears and wiped with her hair the feet of the Lord, and he tore in pieces the record of her previous sins. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Thou knowest, O my soul, how the cities were cursed to which Christ preached the gospel. Fear their example, lest thou suffer the same punishment, for the Master likened them to Sodom and condemned them to hell. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Be 
not overcome by despair, O my soul, for thou hast heard the faith of the woman of Canaan, and how through it her daughter was healed by the word of God. Cry out from the depths of thy heart, save me also, son of David, as she once cried to Christ. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O son of David, with thy word thou hast healed the possessed. Take pity on me, save me, and have mercy on me. Let me hear thy compassionate voice speak to me as to the thief. Verily I say unto thee, Thou shalt be with me in paradise when I come in my glory. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. A thief accused thee, a thief confessed thy Godhead, for both were hanging with thee on the cross. Open to me also, O Lord of many mercies, the door of thy glorious kingdom, as once it was opened to the thief who acknowledged thee with faith as God. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me was in anguish, seeing thee crucified. Mountains and rocks were split from fear. The earth quaked and hell was despoiled. The light grew dark at daytime, beholding thee, O Jesus, nailed in the flesh. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Do not demand from me worthy fruits of repentance, for my strength has failed within me. Give me an ever contrite heart and poverty of spirit that I may offer to thee that I may offer these to thee as an acceptable sacrifice, O only Savior. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O my judge, who dost know me, when thou dost come again with the angels to judge the whole world, look upon me with mercy and spare me. Take pity on me, O Jesus, for I have sinned more than any other man. Venerable Mother Mary, pray to God for us. By thy strange way of life, thou hast struck all with wonder, both the host of angels and the gathering of mortal men. For thou hast surpassed nature and lived as though no longer in the body. Like a bodiless angel, thou hast walked upon the Jordan with thy feet, O Mary, and crossed it over. Venerable Mother Mary, pray to God for us. Call down the gracious mercy of the Creator upon us, who sing thy praises, that we may be set free from the sufferings and afflictions that assail us. So without ceasing, delivered from temptation, we shall magnify the Lord who has glorified thee. Venerable Father Andrew, pray to God for us. Venerable Andrew, thrice blessed Father, shepherd of Crete, cease not to offer prayers for us, who sing thy praises, that we may be delivered from all danger and distress, from corruption and innumerable sins, who honor thy memory with faith. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Trinity, one in essence, unity in three persons, we sing thy praises. We glorify the Father, we magnify the Son, we worship the Spirit, truly one God by nature, life and lives, kingdom without end. Now and ever and unto ages of ages, amen. Watch over thy city, O all pure Mother of God, for by thee she reigns in faith, by thee she is made strong, by thee she is victorious, putting to flight every temptation, despoiling the enemy and ruling her subjects. Conception without sin, birth past understanding, from a mother who never knew a man, childbearing
Christ my God, and illumine my heart. Through the prayers of thine apostles and St. Nicholas, O Lord and Savior. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Send forth thy light, O Christ my God, and illumine my heart. Through the prayers of thy saints, O Lord and Savior. Now and ever and unto ages of ages, amen. Send forth thy light, O Christ my God, and illumine my heart. Through the prayers of the Theotokos, O Lord and Savior. From the heavens, praise him in the highest, praise him, all ye angels of his, praise him, all his hosts, praise him, sun and moon, praise him, all ye stars and light, praise him, ye heavens of heavens, and thou water above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he spake and they came to be. He commanded and they were created, he established them forever, yea, forever and ever. He made a decree and it shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, ye dragons and all the deeps, fire and hail, snow and ice, stormy wind, performing his word. Mountains and all hills, fruitful trees and all cedars, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and winged birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all judges of the earth, young men and maidens, old men with the younger. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His praise is above he earth and heaven, and he shall exalt the horn of his people, a hymn for all his saints, for the children of Israel, a people that draws near to him. Sing unto the Lord a new song, his praise in the church of the saints. Let Israel be glad in him that made him, and let the sons of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord is well pleased with his people, and will exalt the meek with salvation. The saints will boast in glory, and shall rejoice upon their beds. The high praises of God shall be in their throat, and two-edged swords in their hands, to execute vengeance upon the nations, and punishments upon the people, to bind their kings with chains, and their nobles with fetters of iron. To execute upon them the judgment that is written, this glory shall be for all his saints. Praise God and his saints, praise him in the firmament of his power, praise him for his mighty acts, praise him according to his abundant greatness, <clears throat> praise him with the sound of the trumpet, praise him with psaltery and harp, <clears throat> praise him with timbrel and dance, praise him with strings and pipe, praise him with tuneful cymbals, praise him with loud clashing cymbals, let every breath praise the Lord. To thee is due all glory, our Lord and our God, and to thee we ascribe glory, to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill among men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, and thou, O Holy Spirit, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art Lord, O Jesus Christ, to the glory of God the Father, Amen. Every day will I bless Thee and praise Thy name forever, yea, forever and ever. Lord, Thou hast been a refuge from generation to generation. I said, Lord, be merciful to me, heal my soul, for I have sinned against Thee. Lord, I have fled unto thee. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. For with thee is the fountain of life, and in thy light shall we see light. O continue thy mercy unto them that know thee. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. Blessed art thou, Lord God of our fathers, and praised and glorified is thy name forever. Amen. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us, as we have set our hope on thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. Blessed art thou, O Master, make me to understand thy statutes. Blessed art thou, Holy One, enlighten me with thy statutes. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Despise not the works of thy hands. To thee is due praise, to thee is due song, to thee is due glory. To the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. God. 
guide, a guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask of the Lord. Grant this, o Lord. Pardon and remission of our sins and transgressions, let us ask of the Lord. Grant this, o Lord. All things that are good and profitable for our souls and peace for the world, let us ask of the Lord. Grant this, o Lord. Complete the remaining time of our life in peace and repentance, let us ask of the Lord. Lord. A Christian ending to our life painless, blameless, and peaceful, and a good defense before the dread judgment seat of Christ, let us ask. Our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our God. For thou art a good God and lovest mankind, and unto thee do we send up glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. to show mercy and to save us, O our God, and unto thee do we send up glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Lead each soul into the ambushes of thieves, thou hast fallen, O my soul. Into the ambushes of thieves, thou hast fallen, O my soul. And thou art sorely wounded, delivered through thine own sins into the hands of enemies without reason. But while thus still hast time cry out with compunction, O hope of the hopeless, O life of the despairing, raise me up, O Savior, and save. We were filled with thy mercy in the morning, O Lord, and we rejoiced and were glad. In all our days let us be glad for the days in which thou didst humble us, for the years in which we saw evils, and look upon thy servants and upon their works, and do thou guide their sons, and let the brightness of the Lord be upon us, and do thou guide aright the works of our hands, yea, the works of our hands do thou guide upright. Putting on the breastplate of the faith, And on with the sign of the cross, ye showed yourselves courageous fighters. Bravely ye resisted tyrants, and cast down the delusions of the devils. And ye were rewarded with the victor's crown. Intercede with Christ on our behalf for the salvation of our souls. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O pure Virgin Theotokos, accept the supplications of thy servants, and pray without ceasing that we may be given peace and the remission of our sins. Good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to thy name, O Most High, to proclaim thy mercy in the morning and thy truth in the night. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to thy name, O Most High, to proclaim thy mercy in the morning and thy truth in the night. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, cleanse us from our sins. Master, pardon our transgressions. Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. 
Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Amen. Standing in the temple of thy glory, we think that we are standing in heaven. O Theotokos, the gate of heaven, open to us the doors of thy mercy. Lord of mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Without corruption thou gavest birth to God the Word. True Theotokos, we magnify thee. In the name of the Lord, most blessed Master, bless. He who is Christ our God, always now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Heavenly King, strengthen the Orthodox Christians, confirm the faith, calm the nations. Give peace to the world, preserve well this holy habitation, grant repose in the mansions of the righteous to our fathers and brethren who have departed this life, and accept us in repentance and confession, for thou art good and the lover of mankind. O Lord and Master of my life, give me not a spirit of sloth and despair, lust of power and idle talk. Forgive rather a spirit of chastity, humility, patience, and love to thy servant. Yea, O Lord and King, grant me to see my own transgressions and not to judge my brother. For blessed art thou unto ages of ages. Amen. Glory to thee, O Christ our God and our hope. Glory to thee. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Most blessed Master, bless. May Christ, our true God, to the prayers of his most pure Mother of the Holy, glorious and all honorable apostles, of our fathers and among the saints, Nicholas, the wonder worker, Archbishop of Myra and Lysia, Deacon of Zidonsk, our heavenly patron, Deacon of Moscow, the founder of this holy habitation, of the apostles, Aristarchus, Pudens, and Trophimus of the Seventy, whose memory we keep this day, of the holy and righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anne of all the saints, have mercy on us and save us, for he is good and loves mankind. From most blessed Master, O Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us. Amen. 